Hi, my name's Liz Pichon and I write and draw all the Tom Gates books, all 18 of them. Yes, that's right, you heard it. <laughs> you might have quite a few of them in your collection, but Tom Gates' 10 Tremendous Tales is the latest one, which is out in February. Um, and it's a very special year because it is 10 years since the very first Tom Gates book was published. So we're celebrating all the books over the last 10 years. And one of the ways I'm going to do that is I'm going to read you a little bit of every single book in the collection. Um, so this one I'm going to read now is Tom Gates, A Tiny Bit Lucky. Um, this was a funny book because I decided, I mean, hopefully they're all funny, <laughs> But I decided I wanted to um, put a story within a story in this book. And I wanted to imagine that one of the, my favourite things when I was a kid was when the teacher would tell us a story and we'd all sit on the floor um, and listen to the story being told and you'd be really excited about next, what was happening next week and the week after. So that's what I tried to do in this one. So I tried to have another story which went through with Mr Fullerman reading bits of it. But that's not the bit I'm going to read you now. I'm just going to read the beginning part, which um, that's the end paper. My to-do list, do homework, do doodle, eat wafer. Simple things. So here we go. So this is a piece of string that Tom is looking at. According to my dad, this bit of string is going to be a kite. Really? Doesn't look much like a kite to me. Dad's just run out of his shed and gone to look for another, even longer piece of string. He's been gone for a while now. I thought about turning the TV back on, but instead I did this. Look, it's a string doodle. A snail, in case you were wondering. There you go. So he turns the piece of string into a string doodle. Here's another one. How about I add some drawing? There we are. Yo, brilliant, if I do say so myself. Who knew that string could be so useful? Apart from Granny Mavis, of course. The next time I'm in a lesson that gets a bit dull, which happens, I'm going to bring out my emergency piece of string and make a few doodles. That way it'll look like I'm really busy, me being busy. When Dad comes back from the shed, he's smiling and holding up another piece of string. Here we go, Tom. This is perfect. I'm looking at the string thinking, it's exactly the same as the other one. That's great, Dad, I say, trying to sound enthusiastic and failing. Normally, I love making things, like my string doodle, but Dad came and interrupted me when I was right in the middle of watching The Crazy Fruit Bunch, the best TV show ever, or the best cartoon show ever. He stood in front of the TV and started shaking his head in a disapproving kind of way. Tom, why are you stuck inside watching TV when it's such a lovely day? He wanted to know. Firstly, it was not a lovely day. It was damp and cold. Secondly, I was watching TV because the crazy fruit bunch was on and it's hilarious. But I didn't say that. I just kept my eyes fixed on the TV screen and shrugged. There are so many things you could be doing instead of staring at a screen. Come on, Tom. Turn off the TV. Oh, Dad, that's not fair. Can't I just finish watching my cartoon? I asked him. Honestly, Tom, when I was your age, I was always running outside, about in the fresh air. I hardly ever watched TV, he told me proudly. That's because TV hadn't been invented when you were my age, Dad. He's quite old after all. Of course TV had been invented. I just like playing outside, climbing trees and making things with twigs, that kind of thing. What sort of things did you make with twigs? I wanted to know. Mm, I made a lot of things. Like what? I asked. You know, twig things. Things out of twigs. Anyway, it doesn't matter what I made. The main thing was I was out in the fresh air and having fun. Playing with twigs doesn't sound like much fun to me, I told Dad. There are plenty of other things you can do outside. You can play in the garden for a start. It's too cold. So run around or you could ask Derek over. I shook my head because I knew Derek was busy. He's at a friend's house, probably watching TV, I said, trying to make a point. He wasn't, but that didn't matter. How about inviting your new neighbour, June, over? I'm sure she'd come round and play if you asked her. Well, that wasn't going to happen. 
dad, it's not like I'm four years old. My friends don't come round to play anymore. Well, not unless we're having a band practice. I definitely wasn't going to be asking June over. Since she's moved in next door, June's not exactly been friendly to me. It's bad enough having her cat wandering around our garden. And she's in my class too. Every time she sees me, which is a lot, because she sits next to Amy Porter, who sits next to me, June thinks it's funny to say, Tom, you do realise that Do 3 are actually a rubbish band? Huh? Which is not true and also really annoying. And if I had an annoying metre, June would be about here right now and Marcus Meldrew would be here and June's cat is here. <laughs> That's the annoying metre. Sometimes there's not much to choose between all of them. So there you go. When mum came to see what dad was uh, chatting about, she joined in. You're not watching TV again, Tom, are you? She asked me. I'm trying to watch TV, I told her, while leaning to the side of dad. It's not like I watch telly all the time. I just love the crazy fruit bunch. The chances of me being able to watch the rest of the cartoon were disappearing fast. It was impossible to concentrate with both mum and dad glaring at me, so I gave up and turned it off myself. Click. Oh, okay, what shall I do now? I asked them. Well, there's loads of other things we could do. Like what? How about we go for a walk? Dad suggested. A walk? Where to? I wanted to know. Somewhere nice, he said. The sweet shop's nice, I suggested. No, Tom, I meant somewhere like the park. If we had a dog, I'd be really happy to go for walks all the time, I told Dad. We can't have a dog because Delia's allergic to dogs, Dad reminded me. So I said quietly, I'd rather have a dog than Delia. Dad didn't hear me because he was busy picking up a piece of string and that was on the shelf. I know, how about I show you how to make a kite? Then we can fly it together and get some fresh air at the same time. Before I could say, hmm, maybe, or could we do that later? Mum got all excited and said, that's a brilliant idea. It was an okay idea. I'd still rather watch the rest of the crazy fruit bunch. So that's what they do. <laughs> they go off and fly a kite. And one of the things I always like to do in the books is put things to make in the back. And I think this is the book. It would make sense, wouldn't it? There you go. So if you want to know how to make a very basic kite. It's all in the back of the book too. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's a little bit from Tom Gates, Tiny Bit Lucky um, by me, Liz Pichon. Bye. See you later. <laughs>